Good morning, church. Thanks for watching our live stream. If it's your first time watching us, make sure to connect with us on foothillonline.org. We're going to go into a time of worship, so open up your hearts and get ready.
touch my heart like you do I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you there is none worship. You can continue to worship by giving on our website at foothillonline.org or text the number down below. We're going to get ready to get into the Word with Pastor Steve. Hey, good morning church. It's Pastor Steve. Um, it's good to have you here listening on Sunday morning. I want to say good morning to our sister church, Foothill American Canyon, Pastor Rick Mendez. What a great church that is. Obviously, I want to say good morning to our Foothill Napa family. And I want to say good morning to all of you who are watching online, either on Facebook or YouTube or online platform. We're just glad you're here this morning. And I, I have a sermon today that I, I hope will be extremely helpful. I want to talk to you a little bit about navigating the season of, of unrest. <laughs> navigating 
this season of unrest. I shouldn't chuckle, but as I use that word, unrest, this morning, I think you know exactly how, if I were to define unrest, I guess I would define it as the year 2020, right? It is the most a difficult season of unrest that we've experienced, and it's a prolonged period of time. It's just been going on and on and on. So I want to talk to you about that. We, we're doing this series of navigating the seasons of life. Last week, we, we talked about navigating the season of interruptions, how life gets interrupted, and how do we navigate our way through that, how important that is. And this morning, I want to talk a little bit about navigating the season of unrest. You know, as we look back at 2020 and we consider this idea of unrest, think about it this morning. Unrest is really this uneasiness on the inside of us. If it were just, I need rest, it's not about just physical rest, is it? You you know that. I know that. It's not about just going home and getting some more sleep. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this emotional and physical and spiritual unrest inside of us. It's a, it's, it's a discontentment on the inside where I'm frustrated. Things aren't going well and I can't seem to fix it. I can't seem to just, if you will, get life back to normal on easy street, if I could put it that way. So as we look back, obviously, uh, our world is in a... Uh, is in a season of unrest. We've experienced, obviously, a pandemic. We've experienced a disruption in the workplace, in our employment. We've been disrupted socially. We can't just go have a party in the backyard and eat a whole lot of beef and just hot dogs and hamburgers. So that's been disrupted. Socially, we're disrupted. Our paychecks have been disrupted. What we could count on uh, just feels like we can't count on it anymore. Our employment, where we work, we're a little concerned about our government. Obviously, our nation is a little bit in a season, uh, is in a uh, absolutely in a season of unrest. All of this unrest over 2020 has has really been building, hasn't it? I think you know it, and I know it. Not only our country, but as individuals, we feel this momentous mountain of unrest and we feel a little unhinged as if just one more thing is going to drive me crazy matter of fact if you feel i want to give you a little quiz this morning to test whether you feel like possibly you're experiencing the season of unrest you'll know the answers to these statements i'm gonna have you fill in the bubble uh if you uh if you have felt uh any one of these thoughts go through your head then possibly this morning you're you're in a season of unrest number one i'm ready to throw in the what you have to put it in the chat box below you know what it is i'm ready to throw in the towel right just if that's you just say yeah that thought slipped through my my brain and so check i must be experiencing some kind of unrest uh question number two i'm at the end of my what go ahead put it in the chat I'm at the end of my rope, right? These are phrases that if they roll through our hearts and our mind, uh, let us know we're experiencing unrest. How about, I'm just a bundle of nerves, right? And generally we see that in everybody else around us, right? It's real easy to see it in my family and my friends, but it's not always so easy to see it in me. But sometimes if I sit down and I feel that phrase coming to, to the to my mind and and I realize I'm I'm experiencing a season of unrest I'm a little unhinged I'm frustrated how about this one my life is falling what apart yeah if that's you just go yeah I felt that way Uh, nothing nothing is the same as it was two years ago it seems like everything has shifted in my life I'm at my wits what end yeah you know the answer to that one I feel like resigning from the human what <laughs> race. I, that, I guess that's climactic. That's when you're right at the end and you're ready to just go to Mars and live there happily ever after. Well, hey, listen, w- we all know that we're experiencing unrest and that we need to navigate that. We need to work our way through that. 
So I want to talk about that this morning. If you think about it, we're all experiencing this unrest. One guy put it this way, if we're experiencing the rat race, just remember <clears throat> that if you get ahead and you think you're doing good, sooner or later, there's going to be a faster rat that comes by you. And you must remember at the end of this, that whoever wins is still a rat. And the point of that whole little story is, you know, there's unrest in the rat race. If we get caught up in trying to do life, by ourselves, with our own self-effort and just our energies and our strength, life is going to feel uh, unrestful. It's going to feel unhinged, frustrating, because God didn't wire you and I that way. God has designed you and I to work with Him, alongside of Him. He wants to be the one that keeps you from feeling frustrated, unhinged, uh, feeling the, uh, the feelings of unrest and uneasiness inside of you. He says, I want to do life with you. I don't want you to do it alone. So he, here's, here's what we're trying to do this morning. We need to learn how to experience rest. If all we needed was physical rest, that would easy, be easy. We would take a nap. If all we needed was emotional rest, then you and I would go on vacation. And we can't even do that now, right? I mean, I, I can't go to Hawaii, right? Because you, you, you got to spend forever two weeks quarantined before you can go. And then your, your, week, your vacation's over with. Emotional rest, I would just take more vacations. But uh, where can we find spiritual rest? And I want, I want you to hear me this morning. You and I also experience unrest spiritually we're wired by god we're made of body soul and spirit you are a triune being you have all three of those areas in your life they are interdependent and interrelated to each other and what do i mean when i say that that means there there's a relationship between the three and that they're dependent upon each other. If one starts falling apart, the rest of them start falling apart. I mean, you know that. Uh, if I tell you, if you're emotionally struggling and you're depressed, guess what's happening? Uh, physically, you're down. You're probably losing weight. You've got enormous anxiety, and you're probably on anxiety medicine. And spiritually, you just lose all kinds of hope. If, if we're having a physical problem and uh, I'm in the hospital, let's say, with a, a temperature and I'm not doing really well, I'm down emotionally and I'm down spiritually. They're interrelated and interdependent. So as we talk about navigating through the season of unrest, it's so important that you and I manage those three areas of our life. So how do we get uh, rest from stress, Right. How do we get rest from stress? Because really when we talk about the season of unrest, we're talking about being stressed out and uneasy. I, I want to look this morning at three commands that Jesus gave for his people who were weary and stressed out. We know this, religion is a heavy burden, but Jesus invites us to experience real rest. I, I want you to hear that this morning. Religion is a heavy burden, but Jesus Christ invites you and me to a real rest for our souls. Have you ever heard that phrase, real rest for our souls? Isn't it true that, that all of us want rest for our souls? And when we say that, we, we kind of hear that phrase and we understand what it means. That's to be fully rested. Okay, uh, physically, emotionally, and spiritually doing good on all three levels. And Jesus says, uh, I'm going to give you some commands that will help you with this. And, and we're going to pull from uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. So we're going to look at those, this verse. As we read this verse, Jesus gives us three commands that you and I can grab hold of and if we can understand them this morning it's going to help us navigate the season of unrest so let's look at verse 28 matthew 11 verse 28 come to me now there there's command number one come to me all you who are weary and heavy burdened so you're you're weary emotionally and you've been burden the backpack of your life is full and i will give you what jesus says i will give you rest look at verse 29 second command he says take my yoke so we'll look at that what does that mean to take his yoke to do life together with him 
take my yoke upon you. And here's the third command. Learn from me. Learn from me. And here's what will happen. For I am gentle and humble in heart, Jesus says, and you will find rest for your souls. Amen. What a beautiful verse that is. Let's look at verse 30. For my yoke, or the relationship with me and you doing life together, is easy, and my burden is light. Now, when we look at that verse, we love it. It says all the things we want. We want to take unrest and get rid of it and remove it, navigate through it, and maintain a rest for my soul. And that's what Jesus says he, want, he offers us. So let's start look, uh, working our way through this passage and look at these three commands that Jesus gave us. And let's look at the first one. It says, come unto me. Come unto me is the first command. And he promises if we'll come to him, uh, he will give us rest. Jesus, Jesus regularly invited people to come to him. And, and as I, I say that, it seems so obvious and maybe you're saying well pastor I, I don't really know what that means but but i, I kind of want to unpack it this morning because here's what you know and i know if you if you you go to mcdonald's that doesn't make you a hamburger if you you go to a garage it doesn't make you a car and if you go to a church it doesn't necessarily make you a christian right no no it, there must be more than that there must be a Coming to Jesus in a relationship. That, that's what we're talking about. The relationship with Jesus Christ is what brings rest. It's not just a, attending a gathering. Joining a, a small group doesn't make you Christian. Having Christian parents don't make you Christian. But you and I both know this morning that we have to come to him. So his invitation, Jesus' invitation to you and me, is to ter- turn from your own ways and come to him. That's, that's the important part. So when we say, when Jesus says, come to me, what, he, what he's saying is, I need you. You're in a season of unrest. You're out there doing life in your own energy, with your own self-efforts, and it's not working out for you. And you might even be going to church. You might be in a small group. You might be reading your Bible. And those things are all good, and they're necessary, and you should do those things. But if I'm going to really unload unrest, Jesus says, you're going to have to talk to me. That means I've got to start a relationship with him, and then I have to start growing in that relationship. And so it's so important. Now, if you're a believer, you get all this this morning, but maybe you're, you're watching and you're saying, Pastor, uh, I'm, I'm just watching online. I've never watched before. My friend invited me and shared this service uh, sermon with him. And I have just lived a life full of unrest. Jesus says, I want you to come to me. Now, when you come to Jesus, it does include going to church, joining a small group, reading his word. But, but you have to start the relationship with him. He's, God, Jesus is not a, a classroom where it's just a, um, it's, it's just a particular item that we're studying. It's a relationship. And, and it's starting that relationship. Jesus says, come to me, start a relationship with me. And then by going to church regularly, the relationship will grow. By reading the Bible, our relationship will grow. By praying and staying close to me, it will grow. And it will be the ways you maintain rest, even in a season of unrest where so many other people are having such a difficult time. So, so Jesus says, what's going to happen when I say come to me? He says, you're going to have to let down all of your energies and come do life my way. You're doing life your way, and that is what's causing the problems. You're out there all by yourself. You think you've got it all figured out, and you're overwhelmed with unrest. You know, we, we, we put trust, don't we, into so many different things. We think that if we had more money, we would have less uh, unrest, and we just know that that's not true, is it, all the time? That's just not true. We know many of people, and you know many of people, who are rich, have all the money in the world, and they were the mo- they're the most anxious, fearful, uh, worrisome, disturbing people that you've ever met. It, it, we'll look to our government. If right now, if you're looking to our government and our political officials to, to s- solve all of our problems, you're probably experiencing enormous unrest. 
I understand what's going on in, in our country. I understand you can turn on the television and probably turn it off in a few minutes because the unrest in what you see in our nation and in the relationships of people and parties and the kind of language that's being used, it, all you're doing is feeding the unrest that's already going on inside of you. And if you're putting your hope in them, you're recognizing, man, there's not much hope I can put in them to solve all these problems. Now, the Bible is clear. We're to pray for our country, pray for our leaders, and we do that. But, but there has to be this other place I can go where I feel like there's control. Things are uh, th th a place that I go where there's a relationship, and that relationship with Jesus Christ, where when I'm with him, he says this, I've got everything under control. I'm going to take care of you. Regardless what happens in the storms of life, in the season of unrest, the seasons of interruptions, he says this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And, and not only that, Jesus says, I'm omnipotent, I'm all-powerful, all-knowing, uh, I'm all-present, so he's never going to leave me nor forsake me, he's always going to love me, and he's always going to take care of me if I'll do life with him. You see, it's in that moment that the rest, the unrest, you take the you in and it breaks off and it leaves rest. Jesus has this way in my relationship with him. When I come to him, he gives me rest. You know, if, if you think about this morning, if you've ever gone to a counselor uh, in a relationship or in a marriage, or just you're a, a kid who's gone to your dad or your mom and you ask for counseling, there's something amazing about you're feeling all this unrest. You're in high school. Everything's going crazy. It's not going right. You're doing bad with your grades. Um, you know, your car broke down and your girlfriend dumped you and it's just a mess, right? And you, you, you have legitimate unrest. And then, you, you know, you go talk with dad or grandpa and, and in the counseling session, in the relationship, they start giving you some wisdom. Said, listen, man, you're so good looking. The girl that dumped you, you know, you deserve better than that. God's got a, an amazing lady for you. And you know what? We're going to get together. We're going to fix that car. We're going to get back on the road. You're, you're going to be fine. And oh, by the way, you know, I called somebody I know that's a tutor. We're going to start ha having them help you with your grades. And in that moment, nothing has changed in that one moment, but in the conversation, in the, the relationship, and in the counseling of Grandpa, it's in that moment, it's like, I can start feeling rest. That I was being overwhelmed with unrest and now there's direction, there's help coming my way. And Jesus says, I, I just need you to come to me. Y you and I have to realize this morning that, that we have to come to him. If we're going to find rest, we have to come to him and, and he will help us with everything that's going on. This, this verse goes on to say, he's going to help us with uh, with every he will help us with our weariness and he will help us with our burdens those two things and remember weariness if you're weary it means i'm trying i'm working really really hard with all my own energy my self-effort and i'm not getting anywhere jesus says i want to come alongside of you help you with that he says i will give you rest from weariness i will give you rest from your burdens now think about that uh, he comes to you and says Listen, your backpack, you're carrying too much. You're trying to solve too much in your life. I want to help you out. I'm going to remove. I'm going to immediately start taking care of you. To the blind man, he says, I'm going to help you to see. To the person who's hungry, he says, I'm going to pray over some fish and bread, and I'm going to make sure everybody in this place has bread and has fish and has food to eat. You see, Jesus had this way of lightening the load of life and being there for us emotionally, physically and spiritually he says when you come to me uh, i'm going to help you with those three things so come command number one is come to me command number two is take my yoke take my yoke so if i'm going to experience a rest for the soul i must obey god's command of coming to him starting a relationship and then number two taking uh he says my yoke now that that's a unique word maybe you've never heard that but basically it's used metamorphically to, to refer to the submission to a teacher in that time period. So Jesus was a teacher and a rabbi, and what he was really saying is uh, become a submitted pupil of the teacher. 
Come and be a submitted pupil of the teacher. Come to me, listen to what I have to say, take on my yoke, the direction of my life, and if you'll, you'll do what I'm asking you to do, if you'll obey this command, I will help you uh, to experience rest in the seasons of unrest. So I, I want to unpack this idea of yoke just for a minute. So a yoke is really, uh, during this time period, was a tool that was used to take, uh, you probably heard a yoke of oxen. You've probably heard that phrase before. That's where a piece of wood and a bunch of harnesses are put together to attach to two oxen so they can begin to pull together. So they can work together as a team and begin to pull the plow and to begin to plow the field. So everybody knew that, that the yoke, if you were to, you, know, you can imagine, if, if you're in a yoke and you're all by yourself and you're trying to plow a field, you're literally one person all by yourself. And because you're pulling on one side of the yoke and there's no help on the other side, you're going in circles. You talk about experiencing unrest and weariness and trying to do life all by yourself. Yeah, that, that's exactly the picture. Jesus gives us a picture. You're plowing in a circle and you're really not going anywhere. The field is not getting plowed and it's not getting prepared for success and a great harvest. J Jesus says, you have to take my yoke. So Jesus is saying, when, he, when you take my yoke, there's really two yokes, isn't there? There's got to be another yoke because he's comparing. He's saying that the yoke of the the yoke of man is self, self efforts and unrest. That's what you get when you do life by yourself. When you don't come to Jesus, you don't take on his life plan because he has a plan for you. He has a purpose and a plan for your life. When you don't accept that and walk in that, you, you're going to be a feeling unrest emotionally, spiritually. And physically, you're, you're just going to be you're going to be pulling the plow and going in a circle. Yeah, you'll have seasons of success, but you will feel unrest. You won't be happy in any of the successes that you experience in life. And Jesus says, so I want you to switch from self-effort and experiencing unrest. And I want you to go to and pick up my yoke, which is Jesus' yoke. And that yoke, you experience rest, and it's a joint effort. You move from a self-effort to a joint effort. Jesus says, I want to do all the work. You, you know, when I think about this story, I remember, I did this with all of my kids, but usually I'll, I'll find a big piece of wood or something big, long, and heavy, and I would ask them to help me pick it up. And many times they were, you know, three or four years old. They couldn't lift much. And here we are, we're picking up something that's 150 pounds. Well, they would grab one end of it. And rather than me grab the other end of it, which would make us both have to lift 75 pounds, I would slide my way in on that, that heavy item until I got a little close to the middle. So I literally was picking up just about the entire thing. And they were probably only picking up five or ten pounds of the entire weight of that item. But in that moment, they felt like, oh man, I was helping dad. I'm so strong. And then they would tell their brother and sister, look what I lifted, man. It was real heavy. Me and dad lifted it up. And I just have that same picture when I'm with, when I read this passage. You know, I'm, I'm yoked with Jesus. He says we're going to go in the same direction. We're going to be in relationship together, and I'm going to carry most of the weight. But you get to come along for the ride. You get to rest in the experience. You get to enjoy all the success, and we're really going to go places. And, and Jesus says, that's what I want you to do. I want you to take off the yoke of what, we, what I would call man's yoke, which is self-effort. And I want you to take on my yoke, Jesus says, and I would call that the Jesus yoke. And that's a joint effort with you and him working together where you experienced rest in the work. Isn't that something? You're experiencing rest in the work. I think we all enjoy working and working hard at something when we know, uh, we know if we knew 100% we're going somewhere, this is going to make a difference, it's going to be successful, then we're up for it. And we, we can push ourselves physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We're excited about the end product. And we, we typically don't feel a sense of 
uh, being unhinged or weary or broken down in that moment. And Jesus says, you can experience that when you're with me. Because when it's a joint effort, you're on a winning team. Uh, Jesus is carrying 90% of the load. You're probably carrying a little bit, but he lets all of us get the credit together with him. And that's because he's so loving and he's so wonderful. Now, now think about this. There's a picture there of being yoked together with Jesus. He, here's a picture. There's, there's a, a relational characteristics connected with this. So if you can imagine yourself being yoked to Jesus, here's what he says. Number one, when I say come to me and be yoked to me, what I'm saying is there's a connection with us. He says, I just want you to be with me. So when we say, I, Pastor, I, I want to... I want to experience rest. I want to navigate the season of unrest. I want to get rid of all the, the trouble that's bothering me. You're going to have to get close to Jesus. Jesus says, when, you, when I ask you to be yoked with me, I'm asking you to stay close in relationship with me. Jesus says, uh, be with me. So when people are yoked together, they're, they're, they're close, the relationship's growing, and, and they're learning from each other. Jesus says, that's what I want to see happen with us. No, number two, Jesus says, when we're yoked together, you are committed to going where I go. So two, two people yoked together or two oxen yoked together have to go in the same direction. One can't go the other way. You have to go in the same direction. Jesus says, I want to be close to you. And I want you to go in the same direction I'm going. And if you'll do those two things, you'll experience rest instead of unrest. And then lastly, Jesus says, work with me, right? So that's the relationship characteristics of being yoked to somebody. It's the same as true in marriage. To be with me, to follow me, and lastly, work with me, cooperate with me. Have you ever just been going... You know, you get in the car and your wife is driving or your spouse or the kids are driving and, you know, don't go that way. Don't go, well, we got to go this way. You know, well, I know a better way. And then, da, 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 da. and then there's unrest in the car, right? Because there's no cooperation. One person has decided we should drive this way. We should park in this spot. And that's what we should do. And the other one goes, no, nah, I don't want to do that. So we're all in the same car, but we don't like, we want to go about it different ways. Jesus says, when you're yoked to me, he goes, I am perfect. I'm all knowing and I'm all loving. And I'm all powerful. I just want you to trust me. I, I know what's best. Jesus says, not only do I want you to be with me in this yoked relationship, I want you to follow me in this yoked relationship. And I want you to cooperate with me in this yoked relationship. And if we will do that, the result is really put it in a nutshell rest is the result of obedience isn't it it's just being in relationship with him and being obedient to him and resting in the fact that he knows uh, what's best for me so we've said commandment number one jesus says come to me and you'll experience rest take my yoke upon you and you will experience my rest and the last command in this verse is learn from me he says i want you to take up my yoke and then i want you to begin the process of learning begin the process of learning the relationship will grow by learning more about each other uh, and when we learn more about jesus in this relationship here's what we learn he is more trustworthy each and every day you know the challenges that i experienced 10 years ago and I walked through that with Jesus. I, I was yoked with him. I'd come to him. I'd given my life to Jesus Christ. I said, Lord, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. As I begin to go on that journey, I'd love to say I've never experienced unrest. But the truth is, is we'll get going along. And Jesus says, here's where we're going. And then, you know, I get a little inquisitive or I get sidetracked. And I, I start like, like the backseat driver. I start saying, well, you know, Lord, I, I think I got a good idea here. I think we ought to try this. <laughs> and the Lord's just saying, well, I, I want you to be in a process of learning from me. And, and the Lord is so gracious, right? Jesus is so gracious. It's not like he's going to, you know, chew you out. And, and he wants you to grow and, and he wants you to, to learn from him. So, so here's what happens is my life is going. It's going great. 
I've come to the Lord. I'm yoked with Him. I'm doing what He's wanting me to do. We're doing it together as a team. And then somewhere I get sidetracked. Maybe you're like this. You get a different job or the relationship's not going well in family or friends or whatever at work. Things get a little out of kilter. And then what happens is I stop spending as much time with the Lord. See, there's the first problem, right? I'm really taking off the straps that have yoked me to Jesus, and I'm starting to stand back. I, I'm not reading my word. I'm not reading God's word, the Bible. I start uh, spending time with people who don't know Jesus instead of spending time with my spiritual family. Now, I should do both, but I should never get too far away from my church family, my spiritual family. And, and then all of a sudden, I, I'm just full of unrest again. Somewhere I begin to doubt because of what I see around me and what life's going on. I begin to doubt what Jesus has said to me in this passage. He said, come to me, stay yoked with me, start a relationship with me, stay close to me. And, and when I stop staying close to him, I start experiencing seasons of unrest. Now, there are times, obviously, that the world will throw a storm at us that's huge. And we're, we're in one in 2020. I mean, um, it'd be great if there was 10 steps to just not getting out of the, the, the season of unrest that we've experienced. And 10 steps to just being okay with all that's going on. It's not quite that easy, is it? Jesus says, it's within my, in the relationship with me that I'm going to hold your hand. Because here's what we know. Jesus sometimes would be in the boat and the storm would rage out in the sea. And Jesus would just, just like that, say, peace be still. And he'd make the storm go completely away. And it's like, ah, oh, there's rest. Okay, we can rest now. And then there's other times where the storm's going on and Jesus says, I'm not going to stop the storm. I'm just going to hold your hand and walk through the storm with you. Uh, the storms of life will come, but, but when the storm of life is all around me, I just kind of want Jesus to make it all go away. And when he doesn't, then I, I start getting confused and I distance myself from Jesus because I'm frustrated because he hasn't done what I asked him to do. And he says, no, just hang on, hang on, hang on. Hold my hand, stay close to me. Keep going in the direction I've asked you to do. And you just watch what happens. And like any relationship, all relationships are dynamic, aren't they? They are either growing closer together or further apart, but they never just stay still. They just can't stay stagnant, if you will. It just never works. And then the same is true when I start experiencing enormous unrest. I'm typically getting further away from the Lord, and I'm listening to voices that are not my Lord and Savior's. I'm listening to voices and wisdom that's not the wisdom of God that's in His Holy Word. And then I start experiencing unrest. Here's the great news about all that. I just got to get back. I just got to get back being yoked with Jesus, going, staying close to Him, learning from Him, and going the same direction, and trusting in the middle of a storm, just do what he asks me to do, and everything will be okay. And, and, and that's so easy to do. It's so, it's so easy to do is to get back. Now, I'm being honest with you, right? We've had such a difficult year. There's times where I'm feeling enormous unrest, and, and I start looking at, you know, what's going to fix all this? Who's going to fix it? And do I trust them to fix it? And then I come to the conclusion, I'm not sure I can trust anybody to fix it. And this is just going to get worse. And then, ah, and then we just, just emotionally go crazy, right? And then the, the, the unrest, the, the dissatisfaction on the inside, the being unhinged emotionally and feeling like everything's going to collapse. And we start thinking the worst thoughts possible. It happens, doesn't it? It comes our way. But in that moment, I'm looking at all the wrong things. I'm putting, here it is, I'm putting my hope either in my own energies or in the energies of, uh, the effort and energy of others to fix all this stuff. When I'm not looking to my Lord and Savior to fix it, He can take care of me. He can take care of me through any season of life and He can take care of you. And He wants you to hear that this morning. He wants you to hear that. 
He listened. Here's one of the greatest verses that those that have been followers of Jesus Christ for many years, this is one of the ones they typically learn and because it's such a wonderful verse. But, but listen to it. This is 1 Peter 5, it's verses 6 through 7. Hey, I'm going to read this to you, and, and it just sounds so easy. It's, it's, for whatever reason, it's not as easy as it sounds, but if you'll do exactly what this verse is telling us to do, uh, you'll experience rest. L look what it says. 1 Peter 5, look at verse 6. Humble yourselves. So that means I've got, I've got to decide my way is not always the right way. So I've got to humble myself. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, so that means, Lord, I'm, I've decided my way is not going to work. I'm humbled. I'm coming to you to ask, what would you have me do? That he may lift you up in due time so if i come to the lord and say lord i don't know I, I feel unrest i'm unhinged i'm emotionally erect spiritually wrecked physically wrecked i don't know what to do and i humble myself and i come to him he will lift me up in in due time not immediately sometimes it's over a process of time but there will be a moment where he'll get me through it everything will be fine now look at verse seven so cast all your anxiety all your emotional anxiety, all your physical anxiety, spiritual anxiety on him because he cares for you. Because he cares for you. He cares for you so much. He says, whatever's going on, he goes, throw it on me. If you will, you're yoked with Jesus. And you may not know it, but he says, you cast all your burdens on me because I want to take care of you. And he says, he's pulling the, the, the backpack of life and, and he's pl the plow of life that's behind you. The thousands of pounds that you're trying to pull. All, he may have 10 straps tied to all the weight that's behind you. And he says, you give all those straps to me and I'll pull all 10 of them and you pull one strap. So you're, you're carrying 5% of the load, I'm carrying 95% of the load. He says, we'll do life together. And he says, my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. The, the verse in the Bible that says that, it's just like, if I will do it God's way, I can experience rest. You should remember that verse. 1 Peter 5, verse 7, one more time. 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. So listen, He loves you more than life itself. He wants you to experience rest. And does your life feel like it's unhinged? Have you put all of your hope in, you know, our political system? All your hope in your job? All your hope in something that's failing? And it's made you feel an enormous amount of unrest? You know, not knowing what tomorrow holds is fearful. Not knowing where my job is going or whether I'm going to get another job or whether my job's going to be sustainable over the next couple of years. All of that can unhinge us and cause uh, enormous emotional and internal turmoil. But, but God says, if you'll come to me, take my yoke and learn from me. So, so if I'm going to stay in a... a a position of feeling confident and restful that God's in charge of my life and everything's going to be good. I'm going to have to continue to learn of me, he says. I'm going to have to stay close, learn about the relationship I have with him, find out more and more every day about Jesus Christ and how much he loves me. If I will do that, if you will do that, then you will get through this season and people around you will say, you know, you seem awful calm. <laughs> You know, the world's going crazy and you seem awful calm. What, what's the secret? You know what the secret is? His name is Jesus. Jesus Christ. He's a Savior that was born in the city of David. We just had Christmas. He said, I bring good news to you. A Savior is born. Jesus says, I will save you. I am saving you. I will continue to save you if you're one of my children and you follow after me. Well, what does that mean? I have this confidence that, that he is not only going to help me and save me in the world I live in, he's going to save me for eternity. There's going to be a day that I'm going to die here on this earth. 
And that's not a fearful day. It's a graduation day where the Lord says, you're going to move on. And he says, you're not of this kingdom. The Bible says we're of the kingdom of heaven. And then when Jesus Christ returns, he's going to set up his kingdom here on earth. And when that happens, I'm going to be part of that kingdom. And he's going to say, I'm going to give you some amazing jobs. It's going to be amazing. We're going to spend eternity in heaven. Life's going to be just unbelievable. You know, I have that confidence inside of me that he's in charge and that all my hope is in him. And if you'll hold on to the same hope, in Jesus Christ. And he has this way of convincing you. As I have faith and I trust in Jesus, he convinces me more and more each and every day to trust him at a, a greater level because I've seen. If I, if I were to compare my life uh, with, with, with many lives of people that I know, they would say, man, how, how did all this work out for you? And I would tell you, I don't get the credit. I just yoked up with Jesus and tried as best I could for most of my life. Not It wasn't perfect, but most of my life, I tried to do exactly what he asked me to do. And in doing that, I have these enormous wins and successes in life that just reminds me I can be so confident he's going to take care of me from here on out. David wrote this. David wrote this. So life... You, you know, I, I would say this, as I close this morning, I, I, I want to mention this. You know, a lot of times there's unrest in relationships. That's a huge issue. As we look at this pandemic, many of you know that and have experienced that there's enormous rest in, unrest in relationships. Marriage relationships, friendship relationships. Um, and, and COVID kind of has this way of just stirring the pot and making it worse, right? One person in the family wants to go and go to a barbecue and the other one doesn't. And they're fearful about what the impact of COVID might have. And then you're negotiating all of these, these problems. One's trying to decide whether you love me enough to protect me. The other one says, uh, if you really love me and trust God, we can go and you wouldn't worry about it. And it just, just, ah, it just gets weird, right? It gets out of control. What should we do? What's the right thing to do? And I think we all want to do the right thing, but we just, we don't know that we have the right information sometimes to make the right choices. All of this has caused relational unrest. Maybe somebody's been attacking you. So maybe somebody's coming against you. That creates enormous unrest. Well, as I close the sermon this morning, Psalm 62, David is talking and David says, oh Lord, uh, my soul needs rest. There's a whole bunch of people, and there's a situation in the world that I'm living in. He had a 2020 year, if I can put it that way, back in the Old Testament. And David said, man, I don't know what to do. He goes, I I'm, I'm struggling. He said, there's people after me, and I can't trust in them. If I put my hope in them, they're just going to tear me down. And they are trying to tear me down, and, and I'm frustrated. I'm I'm at unrest in relationships and in the world I live in. And he writes this Psalm 62. Listen as I read through this. We're going to read verses um, 1 through 8 here. L listen to this. Verse 1, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Verse 2, Truly He is my rock and my salvation he is my fortress. Isn't that a great word? He's my fortress. He protects me. I will never be shaken. Well, that, that sounds like somebody that has experienced a difficult season and God showed him rest instead of him staying in unrest. Then the next couple of verses, he describes the unrest that he's going through. He says, how long will I be assaulted, God, with all these people? Would all of you throw me down? This leaning wall, this tottering fence. Verse 4. Surely they intend to topple me from my lofty place. They take delight in lies about me and all I'm doing. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. You ever been in that season of unrest with family or friends or co-workers or schoolmates? Look at verse 5. He goes... That's my season of rest, but I'm going to go back to what I know. 
And that was described in verse 1 and 2. He comes back in verse 5 here, and he restates. He, here's, here's what he says. Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from him. I want to read that one more time. Verse 5. Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from him. Verse 6. Truly he is my rock. He is my salvation. He is my fortress. And I will not be shaken. Verse 7. My salvation, my honor, depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Verse 8, trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart to Him, for God is a refuge. David says in that last verse, pour your hearts out to Him. Yoke up with Jesus, stay close to Him. Go in the same direction he, He's asking you to go. And He says, learn, grow in the relationship. And he says, you'll experience rest. Hey, you know, this morning, um, as we look to this new year, you may be experiencing extreme disappointment and unrest. And I just want you to know, as David has trusted in the Lord for so many years, and as David encourages you to trust in him and pour out your heart to him, I would absolutely ask you to do that. Jesus said, uh, come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Jesus is saying, come to me. I want to help you. If you're experiencing unrest and you, you feel it emotionally, spiritually you just feel maybe disconnected from Jesus. And maybe you, uh, you've just been putting your hope in all the wrong things. And that just created more unrest. Uh, I want to pray for you. I, I just want to pray for you. I, I, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been loving Jesus for a long time. I'm growing in Jesus. And I recognize right now what a challenge it is for me. And, and I've been with Jesus for a long time. But even though that's true, I really need His help right now. I need Him to just give me a surety that the future's okay as long as I stay close to Him. And boy, I, I, I recommended this last week, but if, if you didn't listen to last week's message, I'd love for you to go listen to that message. But the, what I'm challenging you to do is to, to take all your panic every, each and every morning, whatever is causing unrest, and throw it on Jesus. Cast it on, on Him. Take that panic and get rid of it. I'm, I'm asking you to praise Him this week. Turn on some Christian music. Listen to it all week long. And if you've been, you've been doing that this last week, hopefully you got to this message this Sunday and you said, you know, Pastor, I had unrest last week, but I've been throwing all my panic on Jesus. I've been praising Him. I've been pursuing Him. I've been reading His Word this week more than ever before because we're fasting and praying. And I've been pursuing His Word and I've been, uh, I've been talking to, I've been proclaiming to other people that I love how great he is. If you're doing that, you're already experiencing rest. And the unrest that was trying to consume you is just falling off. And, and maybe you're watching this morning and you didn't hear that sermon. I'd love for you to do that this week. Every day, get up and say, Jesus, I give you all my problems. I'm going to listen to... Christian music I'm going to read your word and I'm going to pray I'm just going to have a talk with you Jesus and I promise you if you'll do that this week by the end of the week you'll start experiencing rest and have a hope for our future instead of being tormented with unrest about a scary future and, and God's word promises that for you let, let me pray for you this morning Lord we love you and everybody that's watching online and uh, in our church Lord I I just pray for them today. I know, according to your word, and through the historical events that are described in the Holy Word of God, the Bible, you have been so faithful to protect and take care of those you love. And in the same way, Lord, we know that you'll protect us and keep us safe in this season that we're in. So for all of those, Lord, 
that are a little out of balance this morning, either emotionally they're struggling, physically or spiritually. I, I pray for them right now. And in the name of Jesus Christ, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you would encourage them this morning. That they would turn their hope towards you. And as they turn towards you, they would immediately feel the weight of life begin to be removed. And that they put on a yoke coupled up with you that's easy. A life that's easy to do. That experiences rest in your presence. And I pray that in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, God bless you today. Uh, we love you. We're always praying for you. And if you're watching this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ and you'd start to, you'd love to start that relationship, just go to our website or give us a phone call, foothillonline.org, and it will show you how to start a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we would love to help uh, you make that decision and walk with you in growing in Jesus Christ. Hey, God bless you. Have a great 2021. So much for joining us today make sure to connect with us online and feel free to share this live stream on your facebook page and we'll see you next week